Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another edition of Fun Knife Friday. And this is gonna be, a, a, it's a Fun Knife Friday for me. I hope it's a Fun Knife Friday for you. Uh, but uh, I've got some exciting, exciting news. Uh, well, I guess it's not just exciting news, but uh, this is an exciting video because I'm kind of going full circle and beyond kind of if it'll it'll make sense at the end you gotta my mind doesn't uh, work so great uh, sometimes uh, but I'm excited about this because what we're looking at right here is an Exolite K22 now this particular Exolite K22 uh, has significance to me because it was when I started my career as a as a field technician that was uh, this knife was in an Exolite toolkit that I was issued, and this was back in the uh, mid 1990s. Uh, so when I got this knife, I, at, at first I was kind of like, "Oh well, you know, ho hum." It didn't really interest me because it was a slip joint number one. It was, you know, kind of big, and I was like, "Huh," you know, because at that point I was into like small, lightweight lockbacks. That was what excited me for an everyday carry. But you got to remember, this is back in the '90s, you know. So, uh, don't don't uh, judge me too hard. <laughs> Those of you that were there, you guys know. Anyways, uh, this is an electrician's knife based on the uh, TL29. You know, so it says Exolite brand, and if you look, stamped in the blade is K22. And this particular knife was made by the Camillus Company in New York, in the U.S. And uh, this knife has served me uh, very well. This knife was also the very first knife that if you go all the way back at the beginning of my channel, my very first video was on the, uh, the K22 Exolite. And uh, I was excited about that particular knife and had decided to do that first video because uh, Jersey Knife Guy, Peter, he had just gotten a Colonial uh, Electrician's Knife, and it was made the same year that he was born. And so that was really cool, and I was like, the light went on over my head because I was starting my channel, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to start with. And I said, wow, I have a knife just like Pete has. I hope he sees this video. And that was what started it off. And I think like a lot of YouTubers, you know, we all have guys that we watch and stuff. And, and I was talking with another YouTuber today, uh, Tom from Knife Delights. And, you know, we were both talking about how the, the most exciting thing as a YouTuber or as a young YouTube channel is when you get a comment on your video from one of the guys that you look up to. And that's really exciting. It still is very thrilling to this day when I get comments from Jersey Knife Guy, from Tobias, from Big Red EDC, uh, you know, from Knife Detector, from Jolly Peanut, from a lot of guys. You know, you're just like, wow, you know, I was, you know, I'm, I'm basically, you know, doing stuff that they enjoy and that makes you very happy. And it's, it's really cool. Anyways, we'll go over this knife. Uh, here in a little bit. The reason that I have this is because through YouTube, you make a lot of friends. And one of them was uh, Stuart Harvey, who's been a friend of the knife community. He's a friend to everybody. And he sent this to me. This was uh, just a surprise gift that showed up in the mail one day. And it had a note inside that said, hey, here's a, another Exolite that I found. And this can kind of complete your collection of Exolite knives. And as you can see, it's another Exolite knife, but this is the new one. This is the one that Colonial makes. This one was made in uh, 2016, uh, Providence, Rhode Island. And Exolite is still making them. They are the holders of the uh, contract now. So when the military buys any TL-29s and uh, knives of this type, uh, they're national stock number it's going to get them a colonial uh this is a really fine knife it's a little bit different than the camillus 
uh, they're totally made in different decades. You know, this one, I don't, I know it was made in the mid nineties or early nineties based on the, uh, tank stamp, the way that Camillus is written on there. Uh, but I don't have an exact year that it was made. Uh, I know I didn't personally have it in my possession until, uh, I think it was 97 was when I got a hold of that. But as you can see, they're, they're both based on the TL-29 pattern. So you have a, a spear point blade, although this one is not as much of a spear in my mind as this one is, because it's kind of a kind of a drop point spear, if that makes sense. It's not quite a worn cliff. There is a little bit of belly there, but certainly a different shape than this knife, which I would consider this a, a straight up traditional spear. They both have the, uh, now this Camillus does have half stops. The uh, Colonial does not, but it's very smooth. Uh, they both have the screwdrivers and uh, wire strippers. And this one still has really good snap on it. And you can see they're slightly different, uh, different shapes. This one has a, a much more pronounced uh, circle down at the end, at the at the bottom, and this uh, edge is very toothy and very grabby. Where this one, it's a little bit down here, but not so much up here. So up here, it's more straight up uh, screwdriver. You can see how they kind of gave it a little strength here. It's uh, as they, you know, go down to get to your chisel uh, tip. This one, not so much. It's got kind of a, uh, a kind of a different shape to it, but uh, it's still very interesting. Like I said, this is much more of a knife edge on this one. Uh, they have the brass uh, liner locks and the construction is really good. You see the brass uh, spacer dual spring and we'll even look because their uh, bales are a little bit different too. So I do like having the uh, half stop when you're closing this particular screwdriver because it has quite a strong uh, spring on it still. But you see the difference in the bales. The uh, Colonial is much uh, wider and kind of more of an arch shape where this is just more of a, uh, a curve, kind of a, a balloon head shape to me anyways. Uh, and you see that they're wider at the uh, at the bottom. Now this is true for both. This one not as pronounced of an angle. This one it looks a lot more pronounced. Uh, so basically at the top of the X light it's measuring three eighths of an inch at the bolster, and then it's going a half inch at the bottom, where you have a half inch at this bolster, and then it's going to five eighths at the bottom across here. So it just looks a lot uh, thicker, you know, which maybe that helps in, you know, in dangling off of this, uh, this bale or this one too. Uh, but I don't really do that. I either stick them in a tool pouch or they just ride straight in my pocket. I do love how chunky these blades are on the uh, Colonial. Uh, the blades on this, you can see the knife blade is much thinner than the uh, screwdriver blade, which, you know, you need a thick screwdriver blade anyways, you know, if you're gonna be applying a lot of torque to it, but it's just really cool. And you can see that there was room at the end, because even though these frames are both right about the same length, I should have measured that, darn it. I don't think I have a uh, tape measure right here handy, but uh, yes, the, uh, the frames are about the same size, but you see they had a little extra room that they could have gone and the uh, screwdriver stands up a little more proud in the uh, Camillus than on the uh, Colonial. It drops down and your uh, blade is actually a little more proud, whereas on this one, they're actually a little more uh, buried into the blade, but your screwdriver blade sits up a little proud at the end there, which is okay. You know, it's not a, not a big deal. Let's go to the uh, things I did measure uh, so what we're looking at here on the uh, Camillus 
is we have a two and seven eighths inch spear. That's from the point to the uh, bolster. And it has a two and a half inch cutting edge. Uh, it comes in weighing at 3.8 ounces. And the screwdriver is also uh, two and seven eighths inches. The Colonial, on the other hand, you're going to get, uh, besides the saw cut Delrin, which this one is smooth, as you can tell, uh, you're gonna get a two and five eighths inch uh, spear point blade. Uh, that's to the bolster overall length with a two and three eighths inch cutting edge. Uh, your screwdriver is two and five eighths inches long. And this is 4.1 ounces, although you, know, you really can't tell much of a difference between 3.8 and 4.1. This one's just a barely a little chunkier than the other one. But what I think makes up for that chunkiness is the thickness of the stock. I mean, you can see here, it's quite a difference between the uh, Colonial and the Camillus as far as the uh, knife stock. And the uh, screwdrivers, I think, are about equally as chunky. We'll take a look at that. Let me put this away safely, which would be good. Okay, and when we look here, yeah, it still looks like the Colonial might be just a slightly thicker stock than the uh, screwdriver on the Camillus. So, and you can see how much wider that uh, backspacer is or how much the, uh, the backs are. Now, this one is pretty smooth and pretty even. I think everybody knows on the Camillus, especially the ones towards the later uh, the 90s and, and stuff, uh, you were lucky if these lined up at all, and these don't really line up. You can run your finger over it, and you can feel uh, this side's a little high, this side's a little high. But, you know, at the same time, these weren't made as collector's items. These were made as working tools. And so, you know, nobody was really worried about fit and finish. It was kind of like, you know, did it do the job and not fall apart in your hand? Then, yeah, it passes QC, you know, so... We just have to keep that in mind when we look at some of these things, you know, collector knives versus working knives, because uh, your collector knife is gonna, it should have perfect fit and finish, whereas your working knives, you should be able to get by with just a little bit. You know, things don't have to be lined up quite so evenly or anything else, but of course, that's just my opinion. Anyways, these are two fantastic knives. Thank you, Stuart, for completing my Exolite collection, because uh, you know, without you, I I wasn't I didn't even have this on my radar, <laughs> and that's what I mean is that you're such a friend of the community that you know what we need, even when we don't know what we need. You did a fantastic job, and I thank you very much. I'm very appreciative. So, anyways, that's what I have for you guys on this one. Enjoy your fun knife Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, have a uh, just a fantastic time out there with your families and stuff. If you're working, be safe. If you're not working, have fun. Have fun. It's summertime. Fire up that grill and, you know, cook something. Doesn't matter what it is. Whatever your, your favorite thing is, go ahead and cook it. Uh, that's just, that's another fun way to use our knives is in uh, food prep and stuff. I've been doing that a lot more. I've been using my uh, knives that I have that are, you know, that I consider my working knives or knives that I want to get a patina on them and stuff like that. I've been uh, using them a lot more for food prep than I did before. I kind of was like, you know, those knives are set aside and, and I didn't really use them in the kitchen, but I've kind of changed my ways on that. So I hope you guys do too. Uh, like I said, just have fun with it. It's part of the hobby. Anyways, I will let you go. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks.